Hello! So today we're going to take a look at the T6 Texan 2 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This has been developed by Iris Simulations. I completely missed that this had been released at the tail end of last year, so we're finally looking at it. You can see it's really nicely modelled in the simulator. It really, really does look nice. So it'll just have a, a spin around the aeroplane with the drone camera. I'm using the Xbox controller to control the camera. It comes with lots of liveries. So this is the RAF livery. I think it's a 72 Squadron livery. We've got the aeroplane here on the ground at RAF Waddington, which is a free download from FlightSim.2 as well. So if, you're, if you like the look of the airfield, it's a free download. Okay, so just looking around, you can see how well modeled the aeroplane is. If we go and look underneath, you can see modeling of the, the various bays and pipe work and hardware is very nicely done so yeah it's it's very good texturing is lovely so it does come with pilots so you get them with their uniforms that are appropriate to deliveries of course as you can see the RAF liveries obviously RAF uniforms on these pilots not sure that RAF pilots have white gloves but there you go <laughs> um, Obviously the aeroplane's cold and dark at the moment, so we'll go and get it fired up. So as far as I understand, the T6 Texan 2 is the first step up the ladder towards becoming a fast jet pilot. So before you move on to Hawks, I guess, in the RAF, you would be flying the T6 Texan 2s. Okay, so I'm going to put the drone controller to one side, press the insert key to go inside the cockpit. I won't use the head tracking initially. Um, so first things first, let's go and close the canopy and make sure it latches itself. Okay, and I'll work through some written notes I've made referring to the documentation. It's worth saying the documentation is very good. So you get an enormous PDF with the aeroplane. It goes over 200 pages. Huge swathes of it seem to be lifted from the, um, obviously the pilot operating handbook of the real aircraft. So there's tons of information about all the various systems and how they work and interoperate with each other. But further into the guide, there's a lot of coverage of the various modes of the electronics on board, which are not um, to be sneezed at. So yeah, well, you'll see when we get it powered up. So first things first then, we're gonna go and remove the pin on this system here, it's called the CFS safety pin. So I think it's to do with the cockpit and being able to blow the cockpit. So you can probably see here, I think there's a line of cordite or something that will blow the canopy out in the event of um, an emergency. And then obviously if you need to pull the ejection handle, you're not gonna clatter into the glass, but anyway. So batteries need to go to on. Then the chocks need to be removed. So as soon as you switch the batteries on, I guess this is a good point to look at this, part of the avionics suite switches on. So you get a lot of configuration you can do in here. So we've got smoke system on or off. You've got the stores, whether they're on the airplane or not. So you get wheel chocks. We're going to remove them. You'll notice there's a rendering issue here. And that's common of lots of things in this airplane where you can see it very obviously there, look where the rendering is not quite right. It does cover it in the documentation. It's to do with the anti-aliasing method you use in the sim. I'm using TAA, but apparently it doesn't like, or it doesn't get on with TAA very well, but I'm just gonna leave it. It doesn't affect you too much. So you can also see in here, there's an option for the HUD. If you've got the F-35 installed, you can borrow the HUD from it. I haven't got it installed, so I can't do that. Um, I'm just trying to think what else is in here. So if we come back out of here, you go to the iCast screen. And if you come out there to the iCast menu, you get options of what you show on each screen. So you can show a primary flight display. You can show the iCast display, which we just showed. We can show the navigation display. We can show the tactical situation display. Again, this will all wake up properly on the other screens when we're in flight. There is a rudimentary autopilot built in and you can program navigation waypoints through the um, the cockpit, or sorry, the, the pilot uh, control panel up here. So we'll leave this on iCast just for our purposes and we'll carry on with getting the airplane ready. So we need to turn some lights on. So we'll go and turn the nav lights and the anti-collision lights on. So let's have a look at those outside. You can see they're all flashing and blinking away there, which is all good. And we'll turn the oxygen system on. There we have the canopy closed. So the bright green button over there is the oxygen. 
and then the throttle we need to advance out of shutoff and then we can go for the starter and go to it's an automatic start sequence so we're going to look at this from outside you can hear the ticking of the ignition and then it kicks in and ignites and the propeller comes up to speed the animations and sounds are very good okay so aircraft has started up so we can obviously we can monitor the gauges for that happening and then when you're happy that startup has happened you can push the throttle forwards another notch that all happens and then we can go and turn the generators on and then the auxiliary battery switch and the bleed air goes to normal the avionics master switch can come on and you'll see the primary flight display and the um, TSD screen come on they take a few moments for everything to align and configure themselves there is a trim aid as well down here I'm not sure that it actually does anything in the aeroplane in the simulated version and there's nose wheel steering so if we look at the um, instrumentation warnings down here if we turn nose wheel steering on it comes up as a an item if you go faster than about 12 or 14 knots on the ground the nose wheel steering will disengage automatically now unfortunately the aeroplane will accelerate at idle so you end up riding the brakes the whole time to maintain nose wheel steering so you can see the screens have all come up now so we've got everything ready to go um, I'm gonna press B to calibrate the barometers doesn't look like they need to be changed okay so we are ready to go so we're going to put the flaps to take off position I think on the ground you can't extend the spoilers no they will work when you're in the air there's quite a serious spoiler that hangs down from underneath the aircraft so obviously I'm guessing weight on wheels stops that from happening so let's press F press the head tracking and press F12 a couple of times which I've mapped to reset my head tracking so one of the shortcomings with the aeroplane straight away if you're in the wrong place in the cockpit the he head up display will not display properly it starts jittering so come off the parking brake you won't start rolling straight away but if we just raise the throttle and pull it back to idle we'll start accelerating so you can see the knots there on the head up display we got four knots five knots six knots seven when we get to about 14 knots we'll lose nose wheel steering so we have to be mindful to keep touching the brakes which is easier said than done if you only have a joystick with a button for the brake so I've lost nose wheel steering oh no I've still got it I thought I'd lost nose wheel steering no I have lost it now I went too fast so you just need to be mindful of it so I'll engage it again when we get to the turn to turn towards the runway let me just check the sound levels as well while we're doing this so yes you can hear me over the airplane which is good okay so slow us down turn the nose wheel steering back on he says famous last words it's being a so-and-so at the moment there we go it's come back on helps if you press the right button <laughs> So we are just pulling on to runway, now what will this be, runway 20 at Waddington. We'll find out in a moment when we turn. Again, I've lost the nose wheel steering. Like I said, it can be quite frustrating because of it having this habit of accelerating at idle. Obviously, we're not going to have a great view of the yeah, it's about 200 degrees ish the wrong way a couple of 202 maybe yeah there we go okay so let's go and go full throttle which will cause a warning I think we already had a warning anyway so we'll just cancel that so keep an eye on it as it accelerates down the wrong way we'll start to rotate gently it, the nose bobbles up but then it won't leave the ground for a while look and it's quite unstable you can see it tried to dip the left wing there so we'll raise the undercarriage and we'll raise the flaps 
and you can see that spoiler has come down now, even though we didn't command it. So there are some odd things in this aeroplane which you wonder about sometimes. So let's just put it into a climb to get it below 150 knots ish, and then we'll let's trigger the undercarriage animation just so you get to see it because I kind of missed that to show you it. So let's zoom in on this a bit. It's nicely done. Obviously, you saw there, there's a, a huge spoiler. It seems to only have an on and an off position, even though you might have an axis, so you can see it jittering there. Okay, so yeah, you've got this issue with the head-up display. It's not doing it too big. Oh, there you go, look, it's jittering. Which might explain why they've arranged this option to have the F-35 head-up display. So we're just climbing out, and we'll execute a right-hand turn to come round to uh, 20 degrees, which will take us the reciprocal of the runway direction. Don't want to get too far away from RAF Waddington. So it's just coming round. That's the airfield. Okay, so we're still climbing. The aeroplane tries to roll a lot. Um, you end up spending most of your time trimming it, which is not unusual in military aircraft, to be honest. But considering it had that auto trim option, it doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, so it does. The aeroplane does seem com very susceptible to um, flying off axis, if that makes any sense. I've turned the weather off on purpose. We've just got few clouds because any amount of crosswind, and you'll find yourself crabbing at quite significant angles. Right, so let's do some basic tests of aer oh, some, some aerobatics, I guess. This is a 3D aerobatic military trainer at the end of the day for dogfighting practice. So let's go into a, a loop. We start to roll accidentally. Let's pull it out from underneath. Not the best executed loop ever. Okay, so looping isn't a problem, but you do need to stay away from low speed in this aeroplane. I've had a couple of goes in it now. And I'll show you why. Well, before we do that, let's try an aileron roll. So let it stabilise. Maximum elevate, el maximum um, aileron even. And you can see it's fairly straightforward. Now, if you imp impart any elevator in at the same time, maybe to keep the nose at the same attitude. Look at that. So we very nearly lost the aeroplane there, and it's fighting us, it's fighting us, it's fighting us, and we are still ha we're still not out of it, and we're dead. No, are we? Are we? We're dead. So, there's the major problem with the aeroplane. There's a hole in the flight model, and it's still doesn't it look. Let it get above 100 knots, and then we can pull it out. So there is a massive hole in the flight model where if you get the wrong side of it you can enter an unrecoverable tumble and you saw that happen just from using a small amount of negative elevator while we were upside down in an aileron roll. It was only a tiny amount. So if we do it slowly it's okay. So you could do a slow roll no trouble at all. So if we pull up Roll, left rudder, elevator, right rudder, and then pull it back. So we can do a slow roll, no problem at all. But if we pull up, aileron roll, and push under, and look at it go. Tumble. And that snap rolled and we came back out of it. The danger is you might not come out of the snap roll. <laughs> 
Okay, let's get our bearings of where the airfield is. So we're busy corkscrewing all over the sky and leaving the airfield behind. I think it's the other side of... Oh, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to do a touch and go, just to see what the landing performance is like. And then we'll put it into a um, an unrecoverable spin on purpose. It's very, very easy to do. So we'll get those spoilers out. Watching the speed bleed off. And the carriage down. And flaps. And full flaps for landing. And spoilers up. Try to maintain about 100 knots, I think. You can see it's quite unstable. It doesn't help that this, the HUD is jittering, which is not helping our cause. If we sit in the right place, we can see it. Okay, so full throttle flaps back to take off position. The aeroplane was trying to pull right quite strongly there, so the gear can come back up, the flaps can come back up, climb back away. Let's have a look outside, so we're nice and clean again. So it's trying to roll left, so I'm having to trim that back out of it. Okay, let's take it up to altitude and see this spin that I was on about. We could actually do it straight from here, so we'll get some speed up. Because I'm, I'm not going to let it hit the ground. I'll use slew to pull it back out of it. So 200 knots, let's go vertical. We're going to let the aeroplane fall over. As soon as we get vertical, I'm going to let go of the controller. Okay, so... Okay, I've let go of the controller now. So I'm not holding the stick. So the aeroplane is doing this on its own. And that's an unrecoverable spin. Nothing we do will get us out of this. So I'm going to press Y. And then let it fall and get some airspeed back. It's trying to stall all the way. So it's just wanted to show you that really. So spoilers down. Gear down. Flaps. Landing flaps. Spoilers up. And we'll bring it in. So our alpha is getting a bit high there, look. So you do need quite a lot of power during um, approach with full flaps. Flaps up. And can what are the wheel brakes like? Can we make this exit? I think we can. Remember we don't get nose wheel steering until we're quite slow. There we go, I've got nose wheel steering. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed that. 
a little look at the T6 Texan 2. I think the only issue I really have with it is those those aerodynamics issues where, you know, with the flight model. Other than that, it would be great fun to learn the way its systems work because you can reprogram your flight plan and everything from inside the aeroplane using its various systems. It's very, very good. But by the same token, it's very difficult to fly. So we're going to go onto the parking brake here. We'll just stop on the taxiway. If we want to shut the engine off, what we have to do is pull the throttle back to the shut off position. And obviously you'll see the um, propeller slow down. I wish they wouldn't do these animated nose bosses. They do look terrible. So obviously now you're hearing power generation warnings from around the aeroplane, which we can uh, deal with. So we'll go and turn the alarms off. And you can obviously go and turn generator off, turn the battery off. We're getting more and more warnings because we're turning things off. Turn the avionics off. <laughs> it's good that the, the various things are, are simulated, I guess. But it's um, it's good fun. Notice we had beeping there, even though we had we had the auxiliary battery still on, which allowed the warning to happen, even though the master power switch was off. But yeah, it's it's interesting they've they've modelled a lot of stuff in it. Can we blow the canopy? I'm not sure that we can. We can't pull the pin on the ejector seat, so yeah, that's an interesting one. I don't think they've really modelled everything, but it's interesting that quite a lot of things are at least clickable. Okay, so there we go. That's the T6 and T <laughs> T6 Texan 2 from Iris Simulations in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's great fun. It's quite difficult to fly. And obviously it's got a lot of systems modeling built into it. So there's a lot more to cover with this aeroplane, which maybe I'll get to at a later date if I get a chance. But yeah, it's not too expensive. I got it through f directly from Iris themselves from their website. So if you like this sort of aeroplane, it's very nice. You can have all sorts of fun with it, with exploring those systems, with navigation and so on. It's just, yeah, just be very wary of that flight model. As soon as you get into the edges of its range, you can get into uncontrollable situations very quickly. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you again soon.